There are a lot of people who claim that we really ought to be doing something to make math and science education better. The Moody's Foundation project, the Mega Math Challenge, is one of those things that not only says it, but does it. And what they do is they provide an incentive, which are these college scholarships, for students to demonstrate that they can take an applied problem, which is not easily solved, for these students to be able to do this kind of analysis in a meaningful way demonstrates that these kids have a lot of capability. And these kids are just exemplary of the kinds of students that we have probably all over the country. The primary thing is that it's well written and that it's consistent, that the mathematics throughout is consistent and that their recommendations have to do with their results from the model and also that their assumptions are incorporated in the model. We're reading a lot of these papers. So to stand out, some degree of creativity, not just doing the basic obvious thing, but thinking a little bit outside of the box really brings things out too. This contest models real-world problems. Real-world problems are unknown by the fact that they don't have neat, simple, straightforward solutions. So one of the things you have to do is to make assumptions that enable you to solve the problem in a reasonable period of time. You really want people to fully address what's going on, be able to identify a final answer, and we want to see some uh, creativity that may also be reasonable. Now this changes, I think, every year. The problems always change, so there's no one set formula. Another thing is looking at things like how are our results, how sensitive are those to the assumptions that we made or the parameters that we chose? What happens if we vary those a little bit? That's called sensitivity analysis. So when we see students do that, that's a real plus. The important thing is that they take those assumptions, work with them, and come up with a plan to address the questions that are asked. All these teams, they address the problems in a way that was clear, understandable. They communicated mathematics really well. And that really, more than anything, that makes me happy. I want students to be exposed to math modeling, exposed to math in real world situations. You make it sort of to that final round a little bit because of creativity. At the end, we're really nitpicky about the technical aspects. So it, it's a blend, but certainly if, if a paper's not well written, we're not even going to find the good technical aspects. If you just do sort of the same kind of model that everybody's doing, that also doesn't spark attention either. So mathematical creativity, where you know I really thought about this problem and I thought about other approaches, really can make you rise to the top also. It's the most vigorous exam probably that there is in terms of the steps that one has to go through. We go through a, a triage. Each paper is read three to four times. Then it goes to Philadelphia, and we have a team of 12 judges read the papers. And finally, there's this validation. During the discussion in Philadelphia, sometimes there'll be a question that arises about a paper, and, and then frequently that will end up being a question that we ask the teams here. But we come here with an idea of the ordering of the teams. I and mean, that's one of the things that's important, is it's the paper that they wrote that determines who wins. It's not the quality of their presentation here. The only thing the presentation can end up doing is answering a question one way or the other that we had coming into here. It's a very intensive process, and by the time we're through, they've managed to find some of the best young talent in mathematics in the country. 